Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to session two of uh, National Damage Prevention Day. This session is headed up industry champions, including the focus on regulatory performance. Uh, we have two presentations here, um, one by John Pickford, who's commercial director of Portsmouth Water. Uh, Portsmouth Water are new members to um, Line Search Before You Dig. Uh, they are the highest performing customer service water company in the country, and it'd be very interesting to hear how they feel that the LS Bud service will continue to keep them at the forefront. Secondly, we have Borsu Shanavaz and Ludovine Zanga, both from UK Power Networks, and they've been involved in an interesting project um, funded by Ofgem, which deals with providing feedback on network condition and positioning uh, uh, as part of the line search before you dig uh, service. So two very interesting projects and it'd be interesting to see uh, how we can get some positive and powerful questions to these. Um, okay, if we can start off with John, I'll hand over to you, John. Thank you very much, Bob. And thank you everyone for the opportunity to speak to you this morning. Um, my name is John Pickford. I'm, as Bob rightly said, the Commercial Director at Portsmouth. It's a, a new role for me, a new role for the organisation. Uh, I've been working with customer data and asset data for nearly 20 years. Um, and I'm well aware of the value that data can bring both to commercial aspects, but also the safe and efficient running of uh, utility and developer businesses right across the UK. Um, I want to introduce you to a bit about uh, company, uh, the company Portsmouth Water. Um, we are the smallest water company in England and um, we're uh, quite, uh, well, we're entirely unique. I think a very special and, and lovely place to, to be. And I want to talk to you a bit around um, the journey we've been on, uh, why we are number one from a customer satisfaction point of view and what we're doing in our efforts to reduce the risk of asset damage as well as uh, helping everyone uh, work safely right across our patch. So firstly, a little bit about uh, Portsmouth Water. Uh, we were formed in 1857 um, and we supply um, areas of East Hampshire and West Sussex. Um, we, uh, we merged after our, our founding in 1857, we merged with the Gosport Water Company in 1955. We now serve uh, clean water to um, places such as Gosport, Fairham, Portsmouth obviously, um, Haven, Chichester and Bognor Regis over in the east. Um, we've always been in private ownership, we've never been a state-owned uh, utility um, and that, uh, that changes the way that I think we, we view assets generally. At the moment we have 18 borehole sites throughout our catchment area that take water from the South Downs. Uh, we also have 25 springs um, around the Haven area and we use those sources to generate about 170 million litres of water a day. Last year, we replaced or repaired uh, 15 kilometres of mains throughout the year. And uh, we've been innovation, innovative in our use of no-dig technology. And 73% of our mains that we replaced were actually used using no-dig technology, which obviously is an efficient and safe way of, of relaying mains. We also have a, a market leading interruptions to supply number. Uh, last year, we averaged three minutes, 22 seconds for property. Uh, which is um, really one of the best performances in the industry. And I'll come to explain how we achieve that in a moment. So first of all, um, I was asked to talk a bit around our customer satisfaction and how we managed to uh, achieve that number. Um, I think I'd be lying if I, if I wasn't to acknowledge, first of all, that we're the cheapest water company by quite some country mile. And we have very low meter penetration as well, which supports our um, relationship with our customers. I know a large number of complaints and issues come from meters and meter reading generally. So, you know, I can't uh, sugarcoat that. That's a very good reason why we're, we're popular. But also we have, uh, because of our ownership structure and the way that we've been kind of run over the last 150 years, we've got a very uh, prudent view on mains replacement. We replace 1% per annum on, on our mains. And we also make sure our, through good stewardship, we, main, main, we make sure our, our mains network are, is highly resilient. And it's actually been built and structured in a way that if we have an outage or, or a burst, we're able to very quickly reconfigure the network so that customers are supplied from other sources. And that gives us a fantastic agility to respond to issues quickly. I think also I need to mention the fact that we've got a very engaged and supportive workforce. And we have a very, very supportive partner in CAFA as well, who, 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 who breathe our ethos and our values and help us with everything we do with our customers. 
And for all of that added together means that we can remain very agile in projects and then maintain customer satisfaction in everything we do. So what regulatory pressures are there and, and what benefits come from strike avoidance? Well, most importantly, uh, you know, um, the first topic we talk about in any meeting is health and safety. And the most important thing is, is keeping everyone safe. Um, as far as regulatory pressures go, from off what we have uh, an expectation to reduce our interruptions to supply, as I've already talked about, three minutes, 22 seconds. But also uh, asset strikes and failures also create problems around water quality issues, specifically discoloration and pressure issues. Um, that's an ODI and there's a pen financial penalty for us if we don't do our, hit our compliance numbers. But also from the Environment Agency, there's expectation to reduce pollution events as well. Chlorinated water entering, entering the environment is a specific issue. And again, asset strikes and failures create that, uh, that problem. But we embed health and safety right across our business. And I'm sure you as an audience are well aware of what that means to your businesses too. We've been working with ROSPA for nearly uh, 15 years. And uh, 2019 was our fifth year running of receiving the ROSPA President's Award. Uh, last year, this year, sorry, we've just received the order of distinct from, distinction from ROSPA. So we work really, really close with them. We've just also run our uh, annual conference last year. Unfortunately, it was cancelled this year. Um, all about behavioural change. And we had some great and powerful speakers talking about um, the, what that means and how that affects our day-to-day -day working. So what are we doing otherwise to drive down damages? Well, um, first of all, a massive caveat here. I am a data person. I'm the commercial director. I'm not a health and safety or a, or a street work specialist. There are people listening to me today who know infinitely more about this than I do. So please don't uh, shoot the messenger if I get this wrong. But uh, basically, we, 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 uh, our ethos is the regulator is pushing performance all the times. But we always remember that at the end of the day, there's a guy with a shovel at the other end of that. And we need to make sure that safety comes first. We already have very low levels of asset uh, strikes and obviously every strike and near miss is reported and taken very seriously by our business. Um, we allow no mechanical excavations uh, within 30 centimetres of a known asset. When we arrive on site, a crews are supplied with plans. If no plans are available, we only allow hand dig on site and missing assets are reported to the supervisor and, and dealt with accordingly. I mean, the guys on the cruise are well aware of the interruptions to supply ODI, but at the end of the day, we do everything we can to minimise disruption without risking their health. There is an issue around volumes of out of hours issues. So, for example, um, when we demand a maps from our from our service team, we did notice there was a challenge around what could be done when when the service team aren't there. So that's that's the first flag that we need to look at this a bit more closely, understand how we can use data to solve these problems. And that's basically next next slide I'm talking about is, is what problems we have identified and how we ended up starting to work with LS Bud generally. Um, so first of all, to say these images are not from asset strikes, these are our bursts and failures. But I thought it was useful just to highlight to people who may not work in the water industry what, what our crews face when they arrive on site. It's not often a, a nice clean uh, 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 surface area, road surface they've got to work to. Quite often it's very muddy and, and chaotic. So um, we need to understand how we can use data and technology to really improve the speed of response and the safety of the gangs working out in the field. We also need to ensure that um, stakeholders and other utilities are able to view the assets quickly and accurately as well. And one thing we noticed specifically when we started talking to LSBUD is that we only receive a small number of uh, asset requests that we should have been. And that poses the question as to where are these companies going for their asset data if they're not coming to us. So that again poses a risk and potentially looks like it might be an issue in the future. So um, I want to talk a little bit about our relationship with LSBUD and what's happened in the last sort of really the last six months. Um, we only really decided to go with LSBUD at the back end of 2019. We signed the contract in, in February and the service went live in April. And the transition was almost painless. Um, I, I think um, of all transitions I've, I've been involved in, it was one of the best that we've, we've had. I think it helped that the LSBUD team were really supportive and switched on, but also Portsmouth data was, was really good as well. And we were, we were heartened that, that uh, all the effort and, and uh, resource that we put into our data has kind of paid back in, in, this, uh, in this activity. Um, volumes and workload for our staff has changed uh, materially. Uh, and actually, although we're having a lot more inquiries, the workload for staff has changed in as much as 
they no longer have to, to, to wade through hundreds of applications for data. They're able to focus on the ones that actually are important and have specific issues or, or, or relevant problems. Um, we rarely have to intervene with data requests when they come in. Um, we usually have a template that, um, that goes out and it's all really, really smooth. Our own gangs also request data and when we, we're able to respond and send them the data onto their GTAC Toughbook so that they have the data out in the field. We also provide the fire service with this solution, which they're absolutely delighted about. But more importantly, it gives us a really clear audit trail uh, of, of, of uh, requests and challenges that we have, and specifically where a uh, search is made within a strategic, within, within a proximity of a strategic asset, we get an alert. Uh, and that means that we have two directly employed staff who are principal mains technicians. And they are basically, they are, they are um, dispatched when someone searches near an asset, a strategic asset, to go and offer a position and mark service for anyone who operates close to those assets. So that's a real help to us in maintaining resiliency of our service. The other thing that I find uh, most interesting is the data currency and control element. Um, as I said, I've worked in, in data for 20 years and I'm aware that you know, data is only as good as the last time it was updated. And our process previous to LSBUD was to send out CDs to local authorities and to interested stakeholders on a six monthly cycle. The new process with LSBUD is absolutely fantastic. We, we output the data every Sunday morning from our GIS system. They get sent over automatically. And by Tuesday morning, that fresh data is on, on the portal. And that means that at any given time, anyone looking at that data is able to see exactly what new, new additions and new mains and ad, uh, network has been added. It's absolutely fantastic and, and a really exciting element of the service that we're delighted about. Um, to say that the, um, the impact was transformative and immediate was, was perhaps an understatement. Um, we're at the very early stages of our relationship with LSBUD, um, but I can give you some headlines of what we've experienced since the switchover. Um, we averaged about two and a half thousand data requests per annum before the service went live. Um, we got uh, four and a half thousand requests in the first two or three months alone, which was April, May and June, which was during lockdown. So that was that was an impressive number considering that. And September, we've just had our best month ever with LSBUD, where we had 4,000 search requests in just one month, which you can see is, is many times an increase on the previous numbers that we had. Um, we're also getting a large number of new registrations on a regular basis. So when we uh, launched a service in April, we had 270 uh, applications for access. Uh, that's calmed down a little now, but we're still running at about 150 new applications a month. And again, we're delighted that more and more companies are getting to see our data and to share the information that we need them to see at the right time. And response times and resilience are also excellent. Our turnaround used to be 24 hours and we used to have a 10 day KPI most response times are now within four minutes. So we're absolutely delighted. That's such a great service. So that's, um, that's the past uh, and that's what's happening at the moment. I also wanted to take a few minutes just to talk to you about some developments that are happening in our business that also uh, are relevant and pertinent, I believe, and are actually very, very interesting. Um, you've probably seen in the press the last few days, we've just submitted uh, earlier this week, the planning application for our new reservoir at Haven Thicket. Um, obviously changes the population growth and uh, the need to take less water from chalk streams means we need to change the way we run our business. And we have excess water in the winter from, from our springs and, and boreholes, and it makes sense to uh, capture that water and, and to store that somewhere suitable. Uh, obviously the answer is the Haven Thicket Winter Storage Reservoir, which is a, a beautifully named asset. I'm sure it might have a different name by the time it goes live. Um, and but we've been trying to do this for over 50 years. The plans were first drawn up in 1964. We've owned the land that the reservoir has been built on since 1965. Uh, and only now uh, this week, we've been able to, after a lengthy public consultation, we've got everything aligned and we've submitted our plans. And we're absolutely delighted with that. The reservoir will be about a mile wide and about a half a mile long. Um, and it will hold about 8.7 billion liters of water when it's full and supply an average of 21 million liters of water per day. That's enough water to supply 160,000 people for a whole for a whole year. So it's a, a material asset for us and it will make a big difference to the resilience, not just for our customers, but for customers right across the southeast of England. It's so big indeed, it's gonna take 10, uh, two years to fill. Um, and within the construct, we're also putting in um, 
uh, our set amenities we're going to have boating uh, there's all sorts of things going to happen on top on, on top of the lake and there's a vista center it's, it's just a fantastic asset and a, a real great resource for the area so why am i telling you this well part of the process that we need to um go through to, to get the new reservoir working is to build a 4,000 meter uh, pipeline between the sources and the reservoir. And we've started working with uh, a company called Geotech, who's doing our electromagnetic locating and the ground penetrating radar to give us some best uh, view on the route for this pipeline. Um, and what they've done is they've used uh, a combination of mapping and asset data, as well as some augmented reality to show visually the best route and how we need to work to avoid assets that are already there. Um, it's a great bit of work and it's really improved our confidence in the route and it helps us to plan that much better and, and get better costings for when we, uh, when we look to build that route in the next few years. So um, thank you very much for listening. That was quite a, a whistle-stop tour across uh, our experience with LSBUD. As I say, we're only in the first few months of working with them, but the transition was excellent and uh, we're delighted with the, the for all aspects of the service that we've received from them. Um, we hope to continue to provide excellent customer service and provide that very low uh, um, um, failure rate on our, on our assets. And to do that, we will need LSBUD support. The next 10 years are extremely exciting for us uh, as we look to build our, our reservoir. Uh, and we hope to maintain our position as, as the UK's leading uh, water company for customer service. Um, that's all I've got for today. Thank you very much indeed for listening. And I'm going to hand back to um, Borsu, I think now, who's going to take you through his presentation. Yeah, thanks very much, John. Um, I hope all can see me and hear me. Um, yeah, today we're going to uh, present one of the our exciting project. Uh, it's called Line Search uh, Project. Thank you very much um, uh, for uh, giving us this opportunity and I'm super excited to talk about the line search project um, is uh, an innovation project uh, focusing on collaboration between um, um, us and LSPOD and bringing the customer feedback um, into the business and use them to improve our network. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about a little bit, um, for those of you who don't know us, say who we are and why we're doing this project, um, talk about the line search project, and then I will hand over to Ludivin, my colleague, um, to talk a little bit more in details about the project. And at the end, we will have a question and answer session and some poll. Uh, by all means, uh, please uh, do participate in our, our polls. It's really important to us and it will be beneficial not only for us, but perhaps for other utilities as well. Next slide, please. So just a little bit about uh, the UKPN. Um, we are uh, the biggest DNO in the country in terms of the number of customers and the Length of cables we uh, we we have underground and overhead lines. We're serving about 8.3 million homes and businesses in um, southeast of England, uh, from Brighton up to Norwich, and obviously covering the city of London with its unique network of um, dense load and very complex network. We have around 90,000 miles of uh, underground cables, um, which to put it in prospect is like going around the earth three and a half times. And uh, we're serving about 30% um, of the uh, UK peak load. Uh, so not, we're not an energy supplier or a generator, people mistaking us for that. We are, um, uh, taking from the transmission and delivering electricity to our customers. Um, and I'm going to go through the, um, our corporate vision because I thought that is really important uh, for us to talk about that. Um, we have three uh, main vision. Uh, we want to work around to be employer of choice, looking after our employees, 
um, uh, and by that means we so that uh, providing a safe environment for employees um, we have quite a, a lot of uh, field workers and the safety of them is really important uh, in this organization uh, also we have a diverse team of people working and embracing diversity um, on the other hand we want to be a risk respected corporate uh, citizen uh, we wanted to be trusted by our customers uh, we had a really good customer satisfaction score in fact the best uh, dno in that term every 10 customers nine of them are happy with our service um, as part of that we also want to reduce the number of interruption provide a reliable electricity to our customers and uh, finally, we are the cheapest um, um, DNO as well. Um, so we, we want to be cost efficient. We want to provide uh, obviously benefit to our shareholder, but obviously be the cheapest for uh, uh, supplying electricity to our customers. But the main important thing for us is safety. So if you go to the next slide, please. Um, I, I thought I put this slide here to show our journey uh, from 10 years ago to, to now and how we improved uh, the safety, how, how safety culture is really important to us. Um, about 30 people used to uh, get injured or um, not going home safely after they work for the company and 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 ten years ago and now it's reduced to two so that is a massive improvement and uh, we are looking into new ways to keep the um, score where it is or even um, increase, increase um, the safety and reliability is, uh, as I say, is paramount to our business. It's too, too many injuries. Uh, and we are doing initiatives like um, uh, stay, a stay safe campaign. We have public safety events. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, and as I say, is one of the reasons we're doing this project with LSPOD is the, the culture of organization. So if you go to the next slide, please. Uh, but the problem is there. Uh, we still, um, as I said, the sheer amount of cables underground, and the complexity of network, particularly around London area, we are still um, experiencing a lot of uh, cable strikes um, uh, which could cause injuries and harm uh, to public and to our employees. So uh, to just give you an idea, uh, put it in prospect, we, we annually we, we're having 1,200 or even more um, third-party cable strike around our network. Um, we're doing whatever we can in different areas in terms of innovation, in terms of business funded initiative to reduce this number. Just to give you an example, um, last year we uh, had an innovation project called Utility Survey Exchange, uh, which we were focusing on data accuracy and providing the best data we could um, to, the, to our customers. So we, we brought highly accurate uh, survey data with PaaS 1 to 8 data quality into our business, enabled to correct our legacy maps and data. Or another example is um, uh, we sending a sophisticated truck around our network to pick up any voltage or um, a leaks around the network, which could cause a safety incident. Um, so um, line search before you dig is one of those initiatives as part of innovation we pursuing. Um, uh, with LSPOD. Um, if you go to the next slide, please. Um, so just give you um, a little bit of uh, idea of background of the Lionsys project. As I said, we 
we've done a project with uh, utility server exchange we brought some highly accurate data into um, our gis system uh, line search before you dig is another exciting initiative which uh, the idea is actually came from lspod and we thought it's very useful we're giving a voice to customers we're asking them to provide feedback on um, the data we're serving them through lspot platform um, just to give you an idea of we're receiving 3000 inquiries uh, a, a day and uh, so the idea was if you go back to customers and asking them for feedback providing pictures uh, providing data uh, could we use that crowdsource data to improve our network so um, uh, in summary um, we're focusing on data uh, inaccuracy improved data pr prioritizing safety obviously there are other benefits of the project in terms of reducing the cost of the third party strike but our main priority as i mentioned is safety and obviously uh, it, it used to be all one way information the data and the network plans are going through the customers with no feedback uh, we think as a result of this new initiative uh, we're increasing customer engagement and that also very important to us so so this project is um, um, funded by Ofgem is about 200k project um, and uh, started in May this year and going for uh, about a year at the, at the moment uh, we are developing the backend platform bringing data in and we're going to go through the trial um uh, as i say i'm really pleased to given the opportunity to present um, um this information and we are very pleased to receive any idea by all means we are open and um, not only for data related and line search project and this project but any other uh, idea you have you can contact us uh, and at this point i will hand over to ludivin to uh, talk about the project a little bit in more details thank you very much thank you Virgin. thank you so in respect to the lion search how is it going to work so we have our customers that will be logging into the lion search before you dig website once they will be logging to the um, LSBED website, they will be then receiving an email once they have inquired which information, which data they want to actually receive within the area. Within that email, they will be receiving a survey and on that survey precisely, they will be able to tell us and feedback about the quality of our assets um, in order for us to improve, as Bosu mentioned, uh, on the quality of the um, underground, underground infrastructure that we have. Once they have provided us with feedback, this information will be fed into the GSA platform. I'm going to show you a quick demonstration as to how it works. Um, so all information will be fed onto the GSA platform. On that GSA platform, it's an excellent tool because it will be able to give us an understanding of who is working near our network on a live basis. And at the same time, we will have the additional information from our uh, customers that will uh, be able to tell us, well, we believe that your uh, data is great or there are some uh, few adjustment adjustment that needs to be made in certain area. So I will be moving to the demonstration now. Right. There you go. So I hope you all can see the screen perfectly well. So this is the JSA platform I was talking about. Um, this is actually live information. It's still on test. We were still receiving live information through the LSBus portal. Um, then you would have to click onto uh, all the polygons to see all the requests we've had 
from, from LSBIRD inquiries about our network. Uh, you will see where most predominantly where we have the most requests uh, within our um, areas. And then from there, we will be able to, to, to the GIS, the, the GIS, the GIS um, team will be able to identify from the negative feedback and the positive feedback, the, the, the positive, the negative and the pictures where exactly the issue is. Um, so with that saying, uh, from there, you will be able to see what the negative feedback are. Then you have the information box that will tell us a little bit more about who is the customers and provide pictures. And we have a attachment as well that can be uh, visible to understand exactly in which location um, the, 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 the issue could be eventually. And from there, we have all the details in, of, the, of the customer. So this is a test data that we have been able to run with um, Richard, uh, Richard Broom. And just to give you an insight of what eventually when we are going live, what the GSA uh, application will be able to do for us. So um, the GIS team will be able to identify, uh, they will be looking at the negative feedback. They will be wanting to look at the negative feedback with the pictures. We also have the capability to actually see the heat map. So the heat map will be able to give us a better view of um, where are the area that looks great and where are the area that needs improvement if there is any. And this is a very good um, customer feedback report. So within a time scale period for a month or two in certain regions, for this one has been selected for all, uh, the trial will be in Croydon and Kingston area. You can identify through the feedback, how many feedback we have received um, within that space of time. And we will be able to understand as well, which one has been considered and which one has not been considered. So what we are implying by say what has been considered is that the GIS teams, once they have enough evidence of if there is any um, uh, misalignment based on our network map plans provided to our customers, they will identify the root cause and actually agree that the action needs to be taken. So we'll follow up with our customers uh, based on the discretion if they want to be followed up by, by us. And we will consider the, um, the feedback and take action straight away. So this is the job number whereby you can actually get the job number directly from the report and search for a particular polygon straight away on the GSA um, um, application. So this is the project timeline. Um, the project timeline, so uh, as Bosso has mentioned, we have kicked up the project in June 2020. Uh, the survey form whereby our customers will be lending and providing us with some insights of uh, the quality of our data has been launched in October 2020. Um, now we are on trial. We are on trial in Croydon and Kingston area. So we want to expand to uh, the southern region um, of, our, uh, of our distribution operation site in UKPN in order to gather more feedback from our customers. And in April, what we will be aiming in April 2021 is to be able to be in a good position to actually feedback across all our DNOs. So the uh, London region, the Eastern region and the Southern region entirely, and have a bigger view um, of what our customers uh, has to say about our data. In May, we'll be doing some forecasting and reviewing our past six months data for, um, for further improvements and doing some further, some further analysis of what, next, what else needs to be done. Uh, we have to understand that this project is an innovative project. It has never been done in the UK before. Therefore, we are constantly learning um, how to improve and what will be best for our customers and for ourselves as well from a safety perspective and from a customer uh, engagement perspective. And in August, um, we will be aiming to track all the benefits um, and one of our benefits will be to improve safety performance and obviously to lower um, the, the cable damage cost and have a, um, a greater um, customer engagement with our customers. 
So moving on to the next slide, what will be next? So long-term goal will be to capture all the feedback across all our DNOs, as I have mentioned. So the London region, the Eastern region, and the Southern region. And the short-term goal right now is to be in full production within a week time from now, and to capture as much feedback as possible from Croydon and Kingston region. And that pretty much that GSA uh, application will give us uh, a better understanding from our proof of concept uh, to understand if we have been able to reduce injuries and facilities due to the asset strike as well as preventing any damage to the utility network and reducing uh, the cable damage costs caused by third party and as well as improving our customer engagement. So um, we have some pull of question for you um, as we need to get your feedback since it's very new, uh, it's a new product, it's innovative and we are still learning and we would like to have a, a, a great feedback from you as to what else we need to uh, add up to this project that could be beneficial for you as a utility business as well as for us because uh, it would benefit anyone working with the uh, underground infrastructure. So um, I believe that the pool of question will be coming up soon. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, uh, John, Ludovine and Bursu. Very, very uh, enlightening presentations and something which uh, I think everybody will be able to take something away from. Uh, don't forget to put your questions in to, to the presenters uh, as, as soon as you can. And you can do that anytime during presentations. Um, and we will endeavour to, to answer those, or indeed we will send them on to the presenters to make sure that they get answered as well. Um, I have one question to start with, John, if I could. Um, you, you seem very aware, and, and I'm pleased to say, because it's something that's, you know, has been on my mind for a while, that there are a wide range of benefits from LSBUD service, which is not just, I mean, safety is key, absolutely. But you talked about the benefits of you know, it, reducing interruptions, risks to water quality, uh, pollution and pressure. Um, this is not something which seems to be generally understood. How do you think we can, we can get that message across better, do you think? Um, well, Bob, it's a good question. I think um, case studies and providing evidence, I think, would support that, uh, that, 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 that view. Um, and I think you know, where asset strikes do happen, understanding the ODI uh, impact and the financial impact, kind of publicising those, those impacts would be better. Yeah, I think that would be a, a, good, a good way to go would be some case studies. Okay. Thank you for that. Uh, uh, just a quick one as well to Borsu and Ludovine. Um, this is a project which is funded by Ofgem. Do, uh, what do Ofgem see as the outcome nationally for this? Is there a national outcome they foresee, do you think, or is it something which is uh, particularly related to UKPN in the longer term? Yeah, if you don't mind, I'll take this one. Um, so, yes, you're right, the project is funded by Ofgem uh, and the funding mechanism is called Network Innovation Allowance, uh, which uh, by, by means of that Ofgem provides 90% of the value of the project and the company pays for another 10%. Um, one of the Ofgem's um, um, objective is for the DNOs, or in this case for utilities, to share the knowledge of the um, project openly with other DNOs and utilities. So, uh, in fact, UK PLC will enjoy the benefit of project once it's successful and it's going to uh, be a U. Uh, so basically, Ofgem pays for all the um, innovation development design stage and uh, bring the project to a stage that everybody can benefit from the project. Okay. I was just wondering, it's interesting that of, Ofgem has taken that approach in relationship to the, to, the, to the power industry, if you like. And I was just wondering if it's um, something one could whisper in the ear of Ofwat. <laughs> <laughs> in terms of funding um, uh, something in the, in the water industry as well, because clearly, you know, it, there's no difference in, in terms of uh, the, the, the feedback necessities. Uh, it's just as important in the water industry as it is in the electricity and gas industry. 
Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, and it's been the case for the gas network as well, electricity and gas yeah. enjoying all those uh, initiatives, whereas uh, to my mind, water is a little bit behind in that front. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, okay. Then do you think that's possible, John, or not? <laughs> well, yes, certainly now I've seen um, Borsu's presentation, I should be speaking to our head of regulation to understand if that's an area we could uh, develop, certainly. Excellent, okay, thank you. Um, just looking to see if we've had any other questions come through and not at the moment. We've got about three minutes to go um, before we um, we need to move on. Uh, is there anything else, any points that either of you, any of you wish to raise, you've thought about since finishing your presentations at all? I just <laughs> wanted to, sorry. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Just wanted to mention that you know, we're going through a process of um, uh, submitting for the next uh, price control um, for for ED two. Um, we obviously looking for different ways to um, increase our reliability, customer service. Um, uh, and line search is one of those projects which um, is dealing with the data. Um, it's quite important for us um, if anyone could pre provide any feedback, any idea of what we should be doing, what what else could we do we be doing um, yeah. to provide a better service. So we just wanted to just emphasize we are all open for any idea uh, or your feedback. Thank you. John, did you want a quick word or not? Uh, no, carry on, I think we're, we're running out of time. Yeah, while we're no, but thank you both very much indeed. Uh, the next session starts at 13.30, uh, I think. Um, and don't forget, um, we'll be, uh, you need to check on the return to timeline to join the next session. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs>